Hey folks, today we're going to talk about scope levels, why I needed a scope level, why I wound up with the scope level that we're going to talk about today, and we're going to do a part one review of this scope level and go through mounting it. So let's get started. So this is the bench we're going to be working off of today, and I just wanted to show you that this bench is perfectly level, and we'll see how that comes into play in a minute. This is my current F-Class open setup. It's a Ruger Precision Rifle N65 Creedmoor. And let's show everybody that it is empty and safe. Safety first. So no doubt the chamber's empty. Let's put an ECI in. And we'll, and we'll close the bolt. So, safe rifle. Is this a proper F-Class open caliber and rifle setup? No, not really. Not if I want to be super competitive, but I've been shooting F-Class open for a little over a year now. And we talked about it before that I was going to shoot this rifle until I can outshoot the rifle. I'm always solid high master scores. My wing calls are always on. Or, you know, the rifle fails. I'll probably rebarrel it. But, you know, at some point I will get a proper F-Class open rifle, probably. But, you know, I do several different disciplines. I'm probably never going to be an F-Class Open ch National Champion like Cortina, Glasscock, or uh, F-Class John. You know, I've been a competitive athlete before. I know what it takes to do everything to get to the very top level. And ev every time you climb the step, it takes more and more for a smaller increase in performance. And I shoot like four different disciplines in pistol and rifle. I just enjoy it. I'm pretty good at all of them. I'm at the top of any of them. No, but we'll see how it goes. But anyway, let's get back to the topic of today's video and take a look at this scope level. Let's walk through some of the things on, on this setup and why I needed a scope level. And then we'll move into the scope level itself. So that's the Caldwell Rock BR with a shade tree coaxial top on it and a protector front bag with heavy sand. And I've got a three inch uh, rider on the front of this uh, Ruger Precision. So this is pretty much the setup that I shot in the one and only match where I've used this setup. Um, it's modified a little bit in that, okay, the Rock BR comes with a level, but you know, it doesn't have this top. The shade tree top does not come with any kind of a level. So I added a bubble level to it and you can see it's perfectly level. And we'll see what that did to the rifle uh, here in a minute. This setup is a slightly, this setup is slightly different in that I did not have this knob on there, but it's, it, it really doesn't matter for today's purposes. It came with a different knob. We'll talk about that when I do a review on the, this whole setup. So this rifle and setup has a very high dollar spur mount. I really love these things. And as you can see, got a bubble level right back here. I'm going to see if I can get a close up on that. So you can see in there that the rifle is setting level in this whole setup. That was not the case at the match. It was laying more toward, I had to roll the rifle to the left. It was showing, it was showing that it was set up something like that for every shot it needed to go further this way. I tried moving some sand. This is very hard sand. It's very tightly packed. I tried taking this out, moving some over. I think that's helped it some. Um, I did a little dry fire one day and wound up with, uh, with the level out, uh, making this side higher to go ahead and camp the rifle. I mean, I don't think that it's super important that the rest is setting level. It's just that you want your rifle in the front bag rider and the rear, you want it level. Um, so the best thing to show that is the scope level. I don't care what this shows at the beginning. Um, if the rifle's not riding in their level, it doesn't matter. Now, while that spur mount and level is really great, it's really hard to see. When you're down on the rifle right here, it is very close. And you kind of have to shift your focus down here to see if the rifle's level. That is why I wanted to get another scope level. So, this is what I wound up with. The Monstrum Next Level Precision Scope Level. It's 
if we can get a close up on it there. Yeah. <clears throat> that thing was 19 bucks. And it's really not what I wanted to begin with. I wanted one that mounted to the Picatinny rail. I run it on the left side and they swing out. But I read reviews on a whole lot of those, even though most of them have an adjustment on them. So, because when you swing them out, the level arm will change a little bit and you need an adjustment because they're different from when they're folded. Um, but one thing I read on almost all of them was even if they had the adjustment, after one or two, you know, after one or two times of throwing it in and out, it was out of level again. So don't want to spend money on that. I did come across, let's see, what was it called? It's Flatline Ops Tango RM 2.0. I didn't read any issues on that one. But that one's also like $150. I ain't paying 150 bucks for a scope level. You know, a level is, it's a bubble of air in water or some other kind of liquid, you know, with some kind of indices. It's not a $150 piece of equipment. What I liked about this Monstrum, I liked that it was arched because I feel like that gives the bubble a little, a little more sensitivity maybe. Um, and I like that I was hoping anyway that it would stick out far enough in where I wanted to mount it that I could see it with my eye. I'm going to mount it on the left side of the scope. So I wanted to be able to just barely shift my focus, not have to come off of the scope at all like I do on the spur and see if the rifle's level. So where I really wanted to mount this was way up here in front of all the mounts. So it'd be the furthest away from my eye. There's a problem with mounting it that far forward. You can see that the parallax adjustment and the illumination knob are kind of in the way. And the way that thing sat, it was like right at the same level in there. You really couldn't see it at all. So I'm going to have to pull it back here and I'm going to mount it all the way up against that portion of the scope mount. Let's take a look at this for just a minute. It has one screw on it. It's a T10 Torx and run that thing out of there real quick and run it out. And then the thing separates. It's got this little ball and groove type gizmo here that holds the other side. And what am I going to torque this to? I'm not sure. I'm probably going to torque it to about 20 pounds. Um, Trigicon on this scope, they don't give a torque amount on what the uh, scope body should have. Spur does recommend on their mount that all the screws around the scope body be torqued to 25 and that the mounting screws to the Picatinny rail be torqued to a 40. So 25, scope body's already got 25 on it. I figured 20 ought to be plenty to hold this. I'm going to put a little rosin on it like I showed you in another video back on mounting the Athlon to my service rifle. But uh, yeah, let's throw it on there and see how it looks. So we're going to rosin up uh, both halves of this pretty well. Hopefully that will help it to not slip and all right, we've got some good rosin in there and I'm going to mount it all the way forward against that. So hopefully any rifle recoil, it'll already be against, you know, something solid and the thing won't slip back and forth. You know what? I think I'm going to put a little rosin around the scope body too. Can't hurt anything, right? All right, we got that all smeared up with some rosin there. Got that all smeared up with some rosin there. Let's uh, let's find my screw. Where'd my daggum screw go? Oh, okay, there it is. Black on black. Kind of hard to see. Anyway, I'm going to slide this thing apart. I'm going to drop the screw down in there and hopefully not lose it again. And we're going to set this up. I'm not sure if you can see. Let me get a little bit different camera angle. 
So we're just gonna slide that right down to there. I'm gonna rotate that up and we'll start that screw in. Don't wanna tighten it up yet because I wanna get everything perfectly set for the level. So there we go, let's check it now. So I'm just gonna get back here and check, make sure that the uh, rifle is level. It is, and yeah, we're gonna rotate this around a little bit. Oh, I got that nice and just a perfect amount of snug. One thing is this level is a little bit hard to see. Let me get you a shot of that and get it to focus. A lot of that is the light lighting in here. It gives it's very bright, gives a lot of reflection. But I just take a little piece of paper and stick behind there, and you can see the bubble a whole lot better there. So I want to get back to uh, checking this, and we'll torque it down. The rifle is level. Mess with that just a smidge. This thing is very sensitive. It doesn't take much to knock it out. That right there looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the fat wrench. And I'm going to snug it down. I don't know if the thing is going to move or not at all when we torque it. That's always something you wonder about. Alright, there's eight, ten. Now I've got this set to 20. Let's see if it's moved. It doesn't look like it's moved at all yet. Hopefully it doesn't. 12, 14, 15, getting close, 16, eight. Nineteen eight. That's close enough. So let's check and see if it's still all level. So the rifle's level. The level on the spur is level. And the level on the Monstrum shows good. I'm happy with that. So that was part one. I review and set up of the uh, Monstrum Next Level Precision Scope Level. Uh, I think I'm going to be real happy with it. Um, you know, part two will be when I go out, I got some more testing to do, but when I go out and do that, you know, if the thing moves around at all, uh, then uh, I won't be as happy with it. <clears throat> that testing is uh, part of a series I think I'm going to do. I did uh, velocity node testing for this rifle and uh, the 6.5 and the bullets that I'm using. And I did uh, seating depth node testing and they're shooting really, really good. But I want to go out and do a test where I set up and shoot like a, a mock match, 20 rounds, uh, you know, with four to four to 10 ciders just to get the barrel warmed up. And then I'm gonna shoot two or three on each little one inch and see if the impact point uh, moves as the uh, barrel heats up. And how am I gonna know if the barrel heats up? Because, spoiler alert, I got some of these. These are uh, Creedmoor barrel temperature strips. They come in a pack of three and a uh, really good price on them. I can't remember if it was like 12, 18 or 20 bucks, 24 bucks, but uh, you know, one should last for a really long time. They go all the way up to 160 degrees. <clears throat> I'll link that up down here in the uh, description. And uh, I'll also put a link for the uh, 
Monstrum Next Level Precision. $21.80. I think I told you $19 something earlier. That's uh, That wasn't right. It's uh, $21.80. But that is a whole lot better than that, uh, what was it, the Flatline Ops? Like $150 bucks for a scope level? No, that ain't happening. And uh, the Wheeler uh, Fat Wrench. Uh, it's micro tor torque wrench if you're doing any optics work or any really anything on your rifle you need to get you one of these uh, i've been I've, I've had this thing for a couple of years now i've been super happy with it use it a lot so uh, i'll link that up down in the description so you guys go get you one um don't forget to like subscribe and share the videos it all helps me uh helps me keep bringing you content and i really appreciate it and in the meantime kids remember X's win matches. Keep the greasy side down. Y'all have a good one. We'll catch you next time.